Now, I'm here to do what I do best. You know what I'm saying? And let's go ahead and pay my due diligence. Now, in regards to the topic at hand today, it gets a little bit complex. And I'm going to go ahead and elaborate on the chain of events that transpired in regards to Peso Peso, also known as Sauce Walker's Artist and EBK Young Jock. Now, Peso Peso is from Texas and EBK Young Jock is from Stockton, California. Now, let me go ahead and dive deeper into this narrative so that you can all grasp the reality of it. So what actually transpired was EBK Young Jock and Peso Peso had a close nip relationship. Now, before I dive any deeper into this topic, I'm going to go ahead and break down a little bit more of who Peso Peso is. Now, two years ago, Sauce Walker would be involved in an incident where he was almost victimized and his chains were confiscated and he had to stand on business and he had to leave a man deceased on the scene in downtown Los Angeles, California. Now, this situation went viral and it made media coverage all over the world, not just the United States, because so many were baffled at the fact that this actually transpired and a rapper stood on business when Someone was actually trying to victimize them and have their chains confiscated and then them flee the scene or possibly leave another rapper deceased. Now, Sauls Walker ain't one of them. You know what I'm saying? He stood on business. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have to give credit where credit was due. But if you notice, if anybody even know who Sauls Walker or Peso Peso is, um, when Peso Peso was being interviewed and asked about the incident, he was real minimal and he wasn't giving as much information as the interviewers were to the to the interviewers liking because it was more sinister than that. Many are oblivious to the fact that Peso Peso was actually the man that actually left the man that tried to victimize Sauce Walker deceased on the scene. Now, Peso Peso is a Mexican descent. Now, in his blood, he might just bleed it naturally, but he stand on business. Now, this is rumor on the street. Now, Seti Nash went ahead and he tried to put his two cents in and he tried to say that Sauce Walker wasn't standing on business. And that's not exactly what transpired in regards to the chain of events that led up to the man being deceased in downtown Los Angeles. That is actually falsified because he would get on the Internet to say that the police were actually the ones that would leave the man deceased on the scene in downtown Los Angeles after they tried to victimize sauce walker and confiscate his jury now i will say this seti nash did not know what he was talking about okay now i'm not gonna get on here and make this about seti nash but i seen a little clip on youtube because i had to do a little bit of my homework before i covered this story because i needed to grasp the reality of this narrative and who all of these individuals involved were now i know ebk young jack you know what i'm saying i had to really do my homework on peso peso and sauce walker you know what i'm saying i heard of sauce walker don't get me wrong you know what i'm saying but i'm not gonna say i just be like alexa turn that sauce walker on you know what I'm saying? I'm going to just be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm from California. You know what I'm saying? Now, as far as when it comes to diving into different jurisdiction, jurisdictions in regards to um, the music scene, I'm real limited to who I listen to. Now, I'm not saying I'm not open to listening to Sauce Walker. What I'm saying is I've never gotten to that point to listen to him. Now, I do remember when he went viral for... The man trying to victimize him and him having to stand on business. You know what I'm saying? But once I did my homework, I noticed and I heard and I kind of conducted my own analysis. I'm like, okay, it might have really been peso peso that did his one too. But, you know, because Sauce Walker was the alleged victim in the situation, it just would only make sense to say that he, you know what I'm saying, had to leave the man deceased on the scene in downtown Los Angeles. Now, that's neither here or there. That's just a little bit of insight of who Peso Peso is. Now, let's get back to EBK Young Jock and Peso Peso. Now, Peso Peso would be leaving Texas, coming to California to meet with EBK Young Jock. He would fly into Los Angeles Airport, LAX to be exact, and when he flew in, he would have $50,000 $50, in cash on him. He would have all of his jewelry, and he would have a Rolex. Now... When we dive a little bit deeper into this topic of discussion, you guys are going to be like, 
make it make sense. Well, I'm going to try to make it make sense to the best of my ability because the information that I received was real minimal and many are oblivious to this because Peso Peso and EBK Young Jock are actually still following each other on Instagram. But see, what I do is I kind of keep things in the archives for when the time what for when it's time to deliver a story to the people to the fandom to the audience so they can grasp the reality of the narrative now ebk young jock would meet up with peso peso along with his entourage and peso peso would have would have his entourage and they would go to the studio and I don't know if the incident took place at the studio or when leaving the studio, but that is when EBK Young Jock would whip out on Peso Peso. You know what I'm saying? Uses, using excessive force, and he would confiscate his necklace, his watch, and $50,000 in cash. The next day, Peso Peso actually, let me take that back and reiterate that. Peso Peso would go idle. When he would go idle, he would go idle for about 12 hours. The next day, he would post to his Instagram doing features and promos. Deals all day. You know what I'm saying? You know how that goes. When rappers is low on funds, they're going to say features, promos, whatever the case may be, tap in. So that right there was a red flag because he just had 50000 in cash on him. And he didn't have his jewelry on when he made the post. And he showed his face and... When showing his face, he did not have his necklace on. Now, EBK Young Jock would wait until the next night to get the taunting peso, peso, and whatever the case may be. And he would have the 50000 in cash. He would have the necklace on. Um, now, as far as the watch, that's still unclear, but I know that that was confiscated as well. Now, peso, peso's managers would reach out and they would be trying to figure out what exactly transpired or what led up to the chain of events to where EBK Young Jock felt comfortable enough to do that to Peso Peso because Peso Peso actually trusted EBK Young Jock. As you can still see, EBK Young Jock has the photos of him and Peso Peso still on his page. But many are oblivious to the fact that EBK Young Jock got weird on Peso Peso and M. Sin and he bagged out him for his jury and fifty thousand dollars in cash now it wasn't really a bag though dude just did them weird you know what i'm saying and um that's basically what happened and they will be trying to get clarity of the situation now this is actually what is mind-boggling a few days before peso peso would be involved in this incident with ebk young jock he would drop a song with sauce walker and he would elaborate on the fact that if anybody tried to confiscate his jury they will be left on the scene due to the prior incident pertaining to Sauce Walker and the incident in regards to him almost being victimized in his chains, almost being confiscated and one being left deceased on the scene in downtown Los Angeles, California. Now, Sauce Walker would stand on business in regards to saying that not everybody is going for it. Now, when you're a rapper, that is the most dangerous occupation. And I'm going to just say it. You know what I'm saying? Like, many are going to act as if, though, that's the easiest job in America. No, that's actually one of the most dangerous jobs in America because not only are you being watched 24-7, now you're becoming a target. Now you're becoming accessible to vultures that are eager and hungry because now we're living in a day and age where it's hard to make it's hard to make a living it's hard to survive and it's hard to produce a certain amount of revenue to live comfortably so now Everybody is so eager. Everybody is so hungry. Everybody is, is going through desperate measures. I mean, if we take it back to COVID-19, you know what I'm saying? Back to 2020, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, everybody was up on the whoop wop, you know what I'm saying? But in reality, everybody was still struggling because when all that money ran out and everybody was splurging it on the Louis Vuitton and the jewelry and the flashy cars, everybody, by the time the end of 2021 came, everybody was having to sell everything that they purchased in 2020 because the economy is so bad. So back to the topic at hand. Peso Peso is still distraught 
and confused about why everything transpired how it transpired but let me tell you something about stockton california and let me tell you how ebk specifically not even ebk i'm just gonna go ahead and say ebk young jock after his chains were confiscated ebk young jock has been on a roll i really need to ask ebk young jock some for real like no ebk young jock i'm gonna need you to come here yeah you come here um are you okay you know i'm saying like are you okay like, I just need to check in with you because it's not that serious. Then every time I'm looking at you in a video, you know what I'm saying? It's looking like, you know what I'm saying? You're doing a little bit of, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's looking like you're not doing too well. And I'm really concerned for you. It's cool. You want to stand on business. You want to put on this gangster persona because everybody said you from five, six, seven, eight different hoods. You know what I'm saying? You're not really from Stockton. You're really from Vallejo, Oakland, Townhomes, West Lane. Now you're from Nightingale, whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? You have a lot of pressure on you. You know what I'm saying? Um, you've lost a lot of close friends. Um, you know, it's it, it life is life in, and i can understand that if anybody understands you i understand you but what i don't understand is why you're burning the bridges that you're burning and you're willing to mess up these business relationships for a temporary moment for a temporary feeling now what i mean by that is with these illicit substances that everybody is so eager to uh, supply or to feed or to it it's the it's the illicit substances when you become addicted to an illicit substance you're willing to do whatever whenever however that's the best way i could put it let me reiterate that you know what i'm saying and um i feel like ebk young jock really needs to reevaluate himself and i really need him to like come back to reality because this isn't the first rapper or the last rapper that you've done this to. It's an ongoing t uh, an ongoing chain of events. You know what I'm saying? Peso, peso didn't do nothing to you for you to have to, you feel me, get one up on him. You know what I'm saying? Like, all that did was set peso, peso back. But I'm sure he's back now. But many were oblivious to what transpired in regards to this situation. And honestly, I might not be too accurate on exactly how it played out, but just know it played out just like that. And then they went ahead and taunted this, taunted this man all over the internet, and he was actually going through it. And then he had to fly back to L.A. That was a lonely fly back home. You know what I'm saying? And he had to go face his family. And just as a man, I can only imagine how he felt so less than, and that was just so wrong. And it's like, I understand, like, if you're a rapper and you're climbing the ladder and you're building these business relationships, don't jeopardize it because you want to put on this persona for your entourage. Your entourage is not going to do you any justice if you're not allowing yourself to prosper within the industry. We're not going to act as if, though, EBK Young Jock's entourage is not hindering his progression. You know what I'm saying? That's like... With EBK j -Bo. that's why I said when dude gets out, he's going to have to really reevaluate who's for him. When you when you reach a certain status and you're capable of going further, you guys have to start reevaluating everything. Not everybody is worth losing that business relationship with because you're going to gain you're going to gain more. You're going to gain more traction and, and more relationships and more revenue just being a stand-up dude, you know what I'm saying? You attract more bees with honey. You have everlasting business and relationships and friendships when you're being a stand-up dude, when you're being an honest man. And it's like the way that EBK maneuvers in regards to them getting weird with certain rappers and and managers and videographers, it's not good for business. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, it's just not good for business. And I felt like, now was the time to cover the story because many were oblivious to what actually transpired. And um, I really wanted to say this. I don't want Peso Peso to ever feel like he's less than or he's not who he thought he was because you're still that dude. You know what I'm saying? Just because the situation transpired and you couldn't react how you usually react because if we're going to keep it a honey, you stood on business in regards to, in regards to Sauce Walker. Now, you might have just felt comfortable enough to where you felt like you could really trust EBK Young Jack. You can't trust everybody. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you really can't trust everybody, dude. That's all I'm saying. Like, you can't trust everybody because everybody's not for you. The most complex business is the entertainment business because you never know anyone's true intentions. You never know their vendettas, their hidden, their hidden agendas. You just never know. So you always have to have your guard up. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I'm sure now Peso Peso is definitely moving a certain type of way and he's real discreet and militant because he knows how to be discreet and militant and to stand on business. But at that exact moment, he wasn't able to do so. And um, I'm not discrediting him nor his gangsterism or whatever he is or him, his manlyhood or none of that. What I'm saying is you got to really keep that guard up when you're dealing with different rappers from different jurisdictions especially coming to california because every rapper out here is hungry they can make it seem like they live in the best of life the whatever the case may be no every rapper in california is still living a regular life they just have jury they just have someone on the side of them with their name on the lease in regards to a car or regards to a condo, whatever the case may be. They know how to make it look good for the internet. But remember, the internet is all a facade. It's not real. So you have to protect your energy. You have to protect you because you are, you're the prized possession. Any rapper is the prized possession when there's someone of status. Now, you being Sauce Walker's artist, you are a status. You are a prized possession to him specifically. So you have to move accordingly. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't know how Sauce Walker feel about the situation, but I know that Peso Peso definitely felt less than after that situation because he was actually distraught and discombobulated in regards to the chain of events that led up to that. Now, I just wanted to go ahead and shed light. And um, like I said, shout out to Peso Peso. Shout out to Sauce Walker. You know what I'm saying? Um, this video was to not um, be too informative or to be misleading in regards to the message that I was trying to convey. I was just trying to get the story out there to the people, to the fandom, to the audience, so they can have a better understanding of what is actually transpiring behind the scenes in regards to the entertainment business. Now, until then, I'm just here to do what I do best. I rest my case.